The planet is restless, Captain. They want their podcast. And they shall have it. I'll beam down to the surface. You have the bridge. Captain, that is illogical. These are Trek fans. They will challenge and dissect your knowledge with great emotion. It is a mission fraught with danger, peril, and grave risk. Suggestions. Send in the red shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We have a special guest star. Let's get right to it. Yes, I did say we have a special guest star or guest host, whatever you want to call it. She has beamed on to the USS Internet, a special envoy. This is her second appearance. Now, the first appearance, uh, Big Sexy and I got into it about whether she should be promoted to number one or to commander <laughs> number one. Now, this is her second appearance. So definitely, Big Sexy, you're going to have to step aside. Okay, you got to step aside. We got to give this uh, your position to the one and only Devet C. How are you? (laughs) I'm fine. How are you guys this morning? Happy Easter if you uh, do that. Yes, we are recording this on Easter Sunday. Greg J, how are you doing? What's going on? Doing great, thank you. Doing very well. Uh, Two year old is already napping from doing all the Easter hunt. Easter egg hunt and everything. She had a lot of fun, so I was Wait, who, free to record this. Who's napping? Say that again. Gabby, Gabrielle, the do- my daughter. Okay. 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 And uh, to the the guy who was demoted. Now he's still commander, but you know I had to I had to shunt him down a little bit. Big sexy. How are you? I'm holding up a finger for you. That's what I'm doing. Which finger is now, that? I'll Which... let you pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Use your, use your better judgment. Like I'm telling you, Jordy <clears throat> might need some help in that simulation going to scrub out those nacelles. You know, so. <laughs> unlike unlike uh, Deanna Troy, I have no problem sending a man to his death. Anyway, uh, so back to our commander, our number one for this episode, uh, Ms. DeVette. Yeah. Tell us what's new with you. Um. Well, uh... Not too much. I have been. Uh, I did uh, write for a time for Black with Black Girl Nerds, and uh, since then I've gone on to be more freelance. Doing, I actually did write a, an article for uh, Star Trek dot com a, a while back, and um, for Fandango, um, I've done quite a few interviews for them. Uh, the last one with Chadwick Boseman. It's, it's like kind of the highlight okay. for me um <laughs> i have a question wait i, 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 yes, I don't yes. want to go i don't want to go too deep into this just one mm-hmm. quick question mm-hmm. i saw him in 21 bridges i and, interviewed him about that and there's a scene where he goes to his mother's house i think he takes his jacket off my mm-hmm. man looks like he's anorexic or something is he really that skinny in person i really you know what i have not seen him in person since um i think it was the um it was the press junket for um in game so i haven't seen him in person since then my last interview with him was actually over the phone oh. but at that point he didn't look anorexic but wow. um i can tell you i mean just in general um everyone is smaller than they seem uh you know on on television and film, you know, the camera does in fact add weight to them, which is why when I see these very, very skinny people in film, I think, God, how are they live? You know, because dang, you know, okay. but, um, uh, he seemed fine when I saw him last with <laughs> again, you know, he was kind of buffed out for Marvel type stuff. Um, um yeah. So, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well now, Not to embarrass you, Mm -hmm. but I think you gained, at least in my book, you gained some level of infamy Mm -hmm. because on the last show that you appeared on, well, the last that uh, I posted up, Mm -hmm. you had us rolling with laughter with your story (laughs) of, do you remember what I'm I'm about to say, right? No. About, um, we were talking about uh, something to do with homosexuality. I can't remember why we were talking about that. And you told us something about, uh, you heard about, there was this African pastor or minister who said that something about people on a, on a safari saw 
lions, two male <laughs> lions having sex, and that's probably why. What was that story? <laughs> I forget that story. Yeah, there was. A, I I don't remember why I related that particular story, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think it was. Oh God, what was it? Uh, the seeing that kind of thing, I don't know, could influence people. Would influence people. I don't know. No, 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 no. That the lions were influenced. I think it was by homosexuality, and that it was like spreading to the animal kingdom or something yeah, like that. Something like that. It I, was just a bizarre story. I can't, I can't even remember know. what the topic was. Yes. <laughs> And I'm sure everyone listening is scratching their head as well. But, <laughs> but somebody knows about that it. is kind of a subtle segue into what we're going to talk about today. And I must say, I, I mentioned that uh, this is going to be a double header. Right mm -hmm. uh, after I edit this and post this up, uh, within a few days later, I'm going to post up another episode that you appeared on, Devet that mm -hmm. never got published. It, we recorded it March 3rd, 2019. Mm -hmm. It was about Picard and whether or not he was guilty of sexual harassment. And that oh, that yeah. never got posted. We will I will follow this episode up immediately with that next with that I'm going to call it the Lost Archive episode. Okay. okay? So okay. this is going to be good. It's going to be good. So let's get right into today's topic, and that would be, we're going to be doing a review of The Host, the episode The Host, uh, TNG, Next Generation. It aired on, let's see, it was the 23rd episode of season four. So Next Generation, which is my favorite of the Trek series, outside of the original series, of course, TNG has firmly, squarely... Uh, found its groove, is hitting on all uh, cylinders. And even with this episode, which is one of my favorite episodes, it still hasn't hit some of the episodes that will become fan favorites yet, like Darmok or Inner Light. But mm -hmm. I love this episode. It introduces one of the most popular alien races of the Star Trek Berman era series, that being the Trill, Okay. And uh, as we know, the Trill is basically a race of beings that are, they look like large versions of the SETI Alpha 5 eels from Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. But they are symbiotic. They are implanted in another alien race that are designated as hosts. So the Trill is the actual creature that's implanted into a host body. And mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what allows the Trill to communicate have and live, you know, regular humanoid lives. So, uh, so we all saw the episode. I wanted to talk about it because I just thought there were a couple of themes in this episode that, as I was watching it just a couple of days ago, were so fascinating to me. Now, these things, you know, I was aware of them at the time, but I wasn't doing a podcast then. So now, I can express myself as my fellow red shirts can. We can. We can pontificate on this episode. And let me just say this. When I uh, gave birth to this podcast, my my thinking was that I want to come at these episodes with a more erudite flavor, a more uh, academic flavor. That's our niche. So we're all degreed people here. I want you guys to give me your most intrinsic analysis we're going to get deep into this. We're going to get philosophical. So let me just give you a little bit of backdrop on this um, on this episode. Um, as I said, it's the 23rd episode of season four. Uh, and here's the, here's the thing. I never knew this. This is a Beverly Crusher-centric episode. And what I never realized, and kudos to the producers and to the, the crew, Gates McFadden, who plays Beverly Crusher, was seven months pregnant during the shooting of this episode. Ah, oh, that explains a few things. Well, okay. again, right? They, uh, I, looked up, I mean. Well, on, on Wikipedia, they say the, the director, whose name I should have here, uh, and I don't, but um, the director said he was challenged because he had to use camera angles that he wouldn't, that wouldn't normally be used on a TNG mm -hmm. episode. And I, kudos to him because I never noticed any of this. You know, he says that they had to do the whole hiding the belly with the furniture and blah, blah, blah. 
Right. I never noticed any of that. So kudos to him. It was seamless to me. But um, there are a couple, like I said, a couple things that really struck me with this episode. The first thing I want to talk about is the nature of attraction. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I want to. Now there's a twist at the end of this episode that we all know. I want to save that for later. So when I talk about right now the nature of attraction, as we all know, there is a Beverly Crusher is having an affair or a romance at the top of the episode with Doctor Odon, who looks like a humanoid alien. Right, good looking guy. Right, he's got ridges on his eyes, but he's a good looking guy. Um. And she later finds out that he is a trill. And they implant the trill into Commander Riker because Odon, who is the trill, was uh, being used as a liaison, a negotiator, between two warring factions on a planet. I can't remember the name of the planet. So rather than suspend negotiations because... uh, Odon had been injured. The the host had been injured, so they had to take the trill out. Rather than suspending negotiations, waiting for the trill home planet to deliver another host, because it would have taken a few weeks, Riker volunteers to become a host. And so Beverly finds herself at a crossroads or at, in a in a conundrum because while Riker displays all of the traits of Odon and he still loves Crusher Beverly Crusher can't initially remit that love because she sees Commander Riker and it was such a philosophical thing for me it's like what is the nature of attraction what is the nature of what we perceive to be handsome or beautiful is is that all that love is clearly it's not but It has to play, it must play some part. So I want to kind of dig deep into this, and I'm going to give the floor to uh, our guest. How would you have handled Dr. Beverly Crusher's situation? Would it it have been easy for you to put away the fact that your lover is now, has the physical characteristics of, let's say, your best friend? Mm -hmm. Or could you put that all aside because that person is still shares the traits of the person that you loved? I think, um, you know, it's interesting when they we talk about the how she handled it versus and asking me how I would handle it. I think uh, a lot of how you handle, a person would handle something like that would be based on their upbringing, their, uh, you know, who, what they, um, what's the word? Well, I suppose also their sexuality, their sexuality, their, uh, uh, but also a lot of their, their, uh, who you imprint on when you're a child and that kind of thing. When you're, when you're young, you know, when you're a baby and you start, you know, imprinting on people uh, in different ways, your mother, your father, of course, obviously first your mother and then your father. And then, you know, people make impressions on you as you're growing up and that kind of all of that combined with your gender preference, your 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 sexuality uh, combines to figure out, you know, who you want to be with sexually or or just in a friendly way. So I think Beverly In the end, the only thing that kind of bothered me was that she seemed to speak for humans. She said, maybe this is a human thing, but I don't know if I can just make that switch on and off. I think for me personally, um, I, I don't think the love would have ended. I don't know whether the physical relationship would have continued, but that's just me. And also, I don't. I don't know. It's like I'm very much in love with my husband. I have been for the 30 plus years we've been together. Um, has it been 30? No, okay. not quite 30. Okay, that sounds like a but personal anyway, issue. You yeah. got to deal with that on your own. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, for the length of time that we've been together, I love him very much. If someone said, okay, we're going to take Rob's basic self and transplant it into a woman. Would you still be with well? Let's Rob? Let, let's stick. We know. Let's stick with. I want to save that aspect 
a little uh, okay, bit Okay, sorry, sorry. Don't want to spoil anything. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't... Yeah, if, if someone asked me whether I would... Whether I could love someone and and they've changed somehow physically, I guess. Would I still love that person? I don't know. I mean, I I don't know how much those things are tied together for me. I think it would be a struggle for most people to figure out what it is exactly about a person that they love. What, you know, what all of the el- are the elements that make you love someone, fall in love with someone and stay in love with them. I mean, you know, people fall out of love with people all the time. Right. And it doesn't have any, it has to do with a number of factors. So yeah, uh, my answer is, I don't know. You know, that's a valid answer. How, there's some things that we as human beings, we can't answer until we find ourselves in that situation. You know, yeah. I train martial arts. I've been training it for years. I think I'm okay at it. Could I handle myself if someone like Big Sexy would have come at me? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to think I can handle myself enough to get away. It's the I think the whole problem comes is when someone is saying, Well, uh you you know, you're speaking for an entire group as opposed to your individual self, you know, because as you see on Star Trek, people fall in and out of love all the time. People fall in love with androids and they fall in love with Klingons and they're human or they're whatever they are. And then they fall out, you know, and then except like, for, except know, for, I don't love them anymore. Really. Except for Jordy. They never really gave my man a love life. Anyway, that's another Damn, story. <clears throat> really? You know, we're going to talk about that. Jordy, another, that's another show. Jordy fell in love on the holodeck. So the guy's twisted. We, we're going to, well, Okay, let, guys, 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 let's take. Okay, 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 this is this is another franchise. Red Five, your targeting computer is off. What's what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> let's stay focused. <laughs> I know whenever I, whenever I say a trigger word with Big Sexy, boy, he's he's off and running. Okay, so Big Sexy, you're raring, you're chomping, champing, champing at the bit, chomping at the bit. I forget which one it is. You got something you want to say? I w- I want to hear your opinion. Do you think? Now let's put aside. Let let's talk about. You know, uh, heterosexual. Let's assume we're talking about heterosexual relationships. How would you react? How, do you, what do you th- do? You think that uh, Beverly Crusher she should have been a little bit more accepting from the beginning with Riker becoming Odon? And how would you have handled that situation? What do you think? First of all, <clears throat> in this episode. She wasn't aware he was a joined person. True. Until right. things got got a little thick. So he was kind of so, so he was kind of shady for not being true. Exactly. With her. So right yeah. there, he's kind of on point. the slot. Good point. You know. Now you know that aside. You know, I don't know. Well, that's that's a lie. I, I do know. You can't expect someone to have the same feelings when essentially fifty percent of your being has changed drastically, Uh including the equipment that is being used. So it's like, you know, and that doesn't make anybody, you know, Wait, 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 what do you mean by the equipment being used? What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. (laughs) Okay, see, okay, man. We can't talk about this episode without talking about the end. We can't. It's, I mean, that's the whole point of... We can the, still the we can talk. About, we can talk about. I think we can talk about the nature of love without it having to do with gender preference. Now, once we, get, I think. We no, can, no, no. The nature oh, of love is different. You know, different for different settings. Love okay. and preference are two different things, but that yeah. doesn't mean they don't interact when it comes to a physical relationship. I mean, the thing is, is that you know, you can, uh, you can have a physical uh, fulfilling experience with someone uh, despite your gender preference if it comes to that in some cases some people I'm not saying all people some people can do that um, if you say that for instance someone who isn't necessarily out to themselves uh, comes to that realization later on but early on want to believe or want to feel that uh, they are heterosexual, for instance, and then uh, they have various relationships and then eventually come to 
the different realization and move on beyond that? Does that negate the fact that they had these wonderful relationships earlier on or these fulfilling relationships? No, it doesn't. Uh, so I think that there's, there, there's, there are a lot of complex, if we want to talk about the complexities of this episode, one of the things we have to really get to is, uh, what happened in the end, because that was the game changer, not Riker there, you know, she, she had some issues with Riker just because Riker was her friend. Right. 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 She said, you know, I this is, you know, Will, I've known Will forever, blah, 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 you know, but she managed to push forward, even get past those things, you know, for a short time. It wasn't until the end. I mean, she was all ready to open the door and see uh, some other, you know, fine guy walking towards her and she was going to, you know, go forward. But that's not what she got. And so then the question of what he was really uh she really you know had to rethink and why she had to rethink was her was her issue whether that was the wrong thing or right thing i don't think we can say i think it's really just her preference uh well let me ask before we go to craig big sexy had you did you have anything else you wanted to add i'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. yeah think about that what she said because because the guy was on the sly initially, she doesn't know how often mm -hmm. a change like this is going to take place. Right. You know, she could be with the original guy six, seven, eight months. Great. Now she's with Riker, and you know that's got to be finite. And then mm -hmm. the next person comes along, okay, I don't like this one. We're done. Well, wait. Let me just, I, I, not to cut you off, but, I mean, when you get into a relationship, you don't assume that the person is going to die or be killed or you don't go into it with that hesitation you would assume that we're going to live our lives together and we're going to you know die old together for better for worse so okay but 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 go ahead go ahead big sexy sorry and see so you made a, you made a you made a great point you know with ds9 jed z died they weren't divorced they were happily married she died comes back as esri and Warf was like no no. Well, not it initially. Not the same. Was, initially, he wasn't. Well, so, yeah. Worf was no, he hit of, that. Worf was kind you of know. a sucker. <laughs> but let's let's go on to Craig. Craig, what do you what do you think about? I I prefer to just talk about because I think me personally, I think there are two different dynamics at play. Um, the and the first dynamic is about whether or not whatever your preference is. I don't even want to get into that. I think we can make those mutually exclusive. My, myself, whatever your pre preference is, we know Doctor Crusher. Uh, was heterosexual. I know that you were heterosexual, so I think you can speak to that part of it at this point. Did you did you feel for Dr. Crusher? Do you think she should have been able to have accepted Odon in Will Riker's body, or how, t tell me how how you would react in that in that instance? So just to go back and say that I agree that. Um, Odan should have said something about that in the beginning, or at least Starfleet should have known about this race. But anyway, we'll just forgive that being a plot hole that somehow Star Trek, uh, the Federation, didn't know how this race worked. But well, they did say that very little was known about the Trill, so that that's sure. how they that's how they kind of couched that. Yeah, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. so let's just pretend that somehow they didn't know, and on comes Odan. Now, I think that Beverly was initially attracted to him um, from for his appearance, and uh -huh. then, of course, his personality, and together, together it made made her fall in love with him. Then comes the shock that no, well, he's actually trill, and he's inside someone else's body. He gets put into Will Riker. I personally wouldn't have been able to go there because that's that's a friend, uh -huh. that's and somebody who's my boss, let alone. So it wouldn't have wouldn't have worked. So so what I when I watched her fall for Will Riker now, obviously he's not Will Riker, but fall for that character Will Riker. I felt that maybe she had a crush on him anyway at some point in the past, and that helped her lean in and say, "Okay, I can do this." Oh, you, you, oh you're suggesting that you're suggesting that Crusher <laughs> may have had something for Will prior to that episode. 
I think so. I think wow. so. Wow, that's interesting. That's I, 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 I would have said that of Captain Picard. But yeah, that, that, well, that, they had a relationship. Well, not a romantic one, but uh, uh, yeah, I think they that's did. arguable. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what? implied all the way through the series that at one point they had something. No, I, mm-hmm. I don't see romantic. that at all. I didn't yeah. get that. At all. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I get. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, I get. I get more implication that Picard and Guinan had a romantic relationship than I do with Doctor Crusher. They had no. something too, but I think that they're that no, it's pretty much. It's not, it, it's more than implied, isn't it? I mean, it's wasn't yes. there an exchange between them that indicated, if not for her relationship with her husband, or you know, or at some maybe point later, after that, maybe later in the no, series. Oh, she's right. There was one. There was an episode in the first season, I believe, that they stole from the original series. Where everybody got like this space the naked drunkenness. Now. Naked now. Yeah. Naked now. And there's... he rolls up on her. And he's like, what's up? And she's like, what's up? And he's like, yo, <laughs> baby, we can't do this. We got to figure this thing out first. Well, no, wait. I, I, well, I let me, let me be clear. With you narrating. <laughs> let me be clear. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Special edition of the Star Trek series. <laughs> I'm not saying that they didn't necessarily have feelings for each other, but I don't think it was ever expressed or acted upon. Not because until... it's, it's, it's clear in this episode, in this episode, now, so I don't know, maybe I, I agree with you, but even in this episode, when Adon, Adon's on his Mac mode, he's he's sitting down in the ready room saying, uh, Dr. Crusher, she's a remarkable woman. And Picard's like, I'm sure that might, I'm sure that's true. Anyway, he, he <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm not saying that there's no, there are no latent feelings, but they never acted upon it. That's what I'm saying. If you look at think, the last yeah. episode, all good things. Hello, they were married and divorced. But big, te- I'm I not talking about further on. I'm talking about at this point where we are in episode Again, twenty-three. At this point, this already had it already been established in Naked Now that you know we had a little something for this. Again, I'm not denying that they had the hots for each other. Ah, I'm, no, no. It said it said that they did. That yeah, they basically. Um, uh, what is it? I'm looking because I know that this this came out. The episode attached season seven, episode eight. Guys, again, we're on season like, four. I'm not. I'm not saying that it didn't progress. I'm saying at this. No, no, point, no, no, no. This was, they were talking about their past when they first met. Uh-huh. This was them talking about when they first met the depth of Picard's feelings for Crusher, which goes back to when they first met. Is this uh, attached? That episode? Yeah. Right, they mm-hmm. had they had feelings for each other, but I'm saying they never acted on them the way Beverly acts. They weren't overt about it. They weren't overt like Beverly ha, uh, has been towards Odon. Nor I don't think that they ever acted on it like Craig is suggesting that Beverly had the hots for may have had the hots for Will. That's all I'm saying. And I'm saying Picard can't do what? that with her. He can't. Yeah, he can't. Because of her, because of rank. Because no, of rank before and she was ship, married. Man, come on. Before she was married, and then later because he was her captain. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But he, but he did say that he loved her. He said that he had been in love with her. Of course, but he never acted on it because together, she was... man? Come on. Of course. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying. I'm not again. I mean, he told her that. I'm not saying they didn't have the. Hots for each other. They never acted upon it. Plus, let's let's be real. Uh, Picard in uh, the end of uh, the finale of Star Trek, Picard says, "I love you, Data." So, you know. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's really not get true. off on that. Here we really? go. There's totally different. Let's not get off on that, Craig. I want you to finish uh, your analysis. Well, I think I was basically finished. Uh, as I said, I I wouldn't have been able to go there, but I I had the feeling that she must have had the hearts for him previously and this helped to lean into the situation and then they kissed and who else who knows what else they did that night or those nights or whatever so that was the way ew, I ew. It, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but he has yeah. an interesting thought um Riker marries Deanna Troy later on so of course Deanna Troy must have known all about that little action going on there and Let's but, think about that remember Worf and Deanna had something going on too so man that was a mm. lot of Freak, freakery going but on. But Deanna and, and Riker had a previous relationship. They had a pre existing whammy, yeah. Be- before 
the show actually began sort of. There was right. references to their right, relationship. Right. So M- Mzadi. But but you know, she's beta Z. They you know They're freaky. They don't have yeah. issues. <laughs> well not not Fair. according to uh Loaxana, they they don't seem to have issues. But uh well, my that take, crazy. I can I listen, I'm gonna say it for I'm gonna say it right here now. <laughs> I thought Loaxana Troy was hot. <laughs> I'm okay, doing, okay, all right. Well, you have issues. But listen. <laughs> listen, ah, well, listen I got issues. Listen. <laughs> wait, wait. There's someone who asked the question or wrote an article back in 2011. Does Beverly Crusher rape William Riker in The Host? Mm. Right? Now, that's a question. If she had sex with him, which it, it you know, says that, you know, it, it feels like that, she's basically using will's body well let me just let me just uh disavow okay, right. any one of these notions no <laughs> she did not have sex with Riker. why do i yes, know that, that. Why do, listen, listen why do i know she did not because uh Riker's body was weak and frail remember oh, uh, his body his body <laughs> no i'm serious his body was rejecting odon so as a doctor she would not she wouldn't. He was not in any shape to to do anything physical. She was kissing him. They kissing were his, like, okay, no, no, no. Devet, they you've been married standing, for thirty years. They were kissing. <laughs> There's a big then, difference and between. Then, and then we might as well have had a shot of the curtains moving. <laughs> no, you know? no, 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 no. They no. had sex. I don't believe they did. I don't believe that. Oh my that. god! They I don't so believe they that. did. No, they did not. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. The man could barely stand. <laughs> um, nah. That, Not by that time. Later on, it was that was that was true. But at that time, when they had that scene, he, was he wasn't that bad. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! No. Okay. Remember when he, the scene, he was standing this, up. No, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I'm gonna put it, <laughs> I'm gonna put it into all this right now. Are we learning <laughs> a perspective? When 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 Riker was laying on the uh, on the day couch, whatever you call that thing, and Frank's doing his. He, this was not a. This was not a very that good. That was episode. after. No, it that wasn't. was after. No, it wasn't. It no. was after in the scene. That was after. No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. He's this is the first time we see Riker after he's been implanted. He's laying down on the couch and he says and and uh he tries to uh make a, a move on her and she turns away and he turn and this is one of Frake's bad acting moments. If this causes you pain, I will not <laughs> I will I will uh, uh rid myself of these feelings. But that was right after the implant. Then after that, he got strong enough to have the meeting, and you know, with the, you know all that stuff. He he was he was up and about, and then they had another conversation when they kissed, and he was fine. And then after that, you saw him in the captain's ready room, laying on the couch right before he had to go do the negotiation or whatever, and he was noticeably weaker and i do believe that was because he had had wild crazy sex with, <laughs> Stop with the, it. i was like Stop how did she it. do that he was barely on his <laughs> she did not All have right. sex with Riker. I, I don't okay. believe it <laughs> she not, not saying she wouldn't have <clears throat> but not at that moment I come think on she, she had she, I, she was the doctor she had the hyper spray ready come on <laughs> <laughs> i believe she not listen she well, think about it for a second. Now this is the this is the psychological aspect, right? She knows a new host is coming. Why would she have sex due to those ethical quandaries that this this writer who brilliantly brought this up, it's an excellent thing to explore. Why would she do that with that ethical quandary when she knows uh there's another host coming? There's no way she had sex with him. Not the well, character of Crusher that I know. They don't well, you know, she had Sex with ghosts and oh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> no, seriously, Crusher wasn't that picky. You know, I mean, Damn, she was why, like, you, why no, are y'all she, dogging out my girl like that? Dude, she, was like, <laughs> she was like, she had the ghost. She had anyway. You know, she. I don't blame her because she had a son to raise pretty much by herself for a long time, and they were both on the same starship. If she was like sleeping around, on, it would be kind of oh, hard yeah. to explain to her boy. Somebody would be talking in school. You know your mom. You know your mom. <laughs> you know. See, so see, she waited until Wesley was gone, and then she just went to town. See, I was hoping yeah, to have, I have a... to agree with with <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. I was hoping I'm look, to have. I'm looking a... at it right now, Q. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. I was if hoping. You, if you go back and go to like the thirty words. Okay, right around the 30... Oh, 30 God. minute mark. 
36 minutes and 39 seconds. They were in that room together, and she's like, what's up? He's like, what's up? And they start making out. And next thing you know, it's the next day. Come in. I thought I should see how you were doing. If you needed another hypo spray. I don't think so. The symptoms haven't returned. Oh, well, that's good. Yes. Uh, tomorrow's an important day. Do you feel ready for it? I'll be fine. I've been preparing. Oh, that's good. Yes. I'll um, check your vital signs in the morning before the representatives get here. I don't want them knowing that I'm taking any medication. Maybe you could schedule a series of breaks. That's good. Yes. Beverly, I want you. If you're going to leave, you better go right now. I'm not leaving. He got listen, them. Listen, listen. I'm telling you, they had sex. They got I looked at that and I was like, really, Beverly? Okay. No. She was curious. Like, what's that right there? See, I was hoping to have a conversation. <laughs> I was hoping to have a conversation worthy of Freud. You guys have uh, turned into a conversation worthy of Jerry Springer. Knock it off. No. She didn't have sex. Beverly Crusher she is a did. woman. Oh, my she's, God. If we want to talk on Freud, they definitely had sex. I mean, it's like, Freud would be like, yes, they had sex, and it was a good thing. Listen, I, I, I'm mad. Look at him. Listen, he, I, he's on the couch all wore out. Yeah. I am we going all know. to full. The next Next scene, he's like, oh, "Y'all tripping? Y'all tripping?" <laughs> she laid him on him. That's this. what it is. <laughs> wow, Devet, how you gonna listen? I'm I'm mansplaining now, okay? Beverly Crusher is ahead, a lady. Man. She's a lady oh. of highest caliber. She would not and? have sex with William she Riker when she knows another host is coming. Century woman. Huh? And listen, when she got that kiss on the wrist at the end, she was definitely mm -hmm. rethinking her decision. Yes, she was. Because she was like, yes, she was. Uh, wait a minute. Let's talk a minute. Because, mm. um, <laughs> so, you know, just Odon would still have those moves. You know, he See, would let, still. Let me, let me tell you about women, Q, okay? <laughs> let me explain something to you. Okay, okay listen. The more, the more educated a woman is, the more she's ready to get, get it popping. Wow. Trust me. Yep. Devet is, De De is in the room. Now, I would say I'm not speaking for all women. I'm not saying necessarily it has education is, is the key, but I think Asian experience is gives you a wait, wait, better wait. Did you idea. Say, did you, say, you said, I want to be clear, because it sounded like you said Asian experience. No, no age, age. Oh, my age. God. <laughs> age <laughs> and experience. Because we talked about and Asians before, and I got in trouble, so... Let's not go I there. Why do we, why do we a... need this guy? I mean, really. I know, really. It's like, <laughs> Me and you and Craig will just take off your own We need to have a conversation. And, no. I just think women have a tendency to be a little more... Uh, I don't... You know, they tend to be a little more willing to discuss options. Mm-hmm. And the I more just, education, well, uh, well, not the more education, the more, more experience, the more you've lived, the longer you've lived, you have, I think, a tendency to even to to think, well, who knows? Maybe, you know? You mean you have, um, you have more of a tendency to uh, reduce... I'm not talking about heterosexuality as a norm. I'm talking about just sexuality. And and we do have two different discussions going on right now. We we are like focusing on sexuality right now. But if we're talking, uh, but I do think that, yeah, women maybe have a tendency to be a little more open, a little more flexible, a little less rigid when it comes to those. Well, uh, I guess. Uh, I, I and guess, Beverly is no exception. I guess I need to uh, reevaluate my past because maybe women was hurting my feelings because the ones I was running <laughs> into. It wasn't about no options. <laughs> well, it either you know. it either See, Q, was. You're, you're making this too easy for me. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you really are. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking of one woman that I was really attracted to, and she was so rigid. I had to have this in a man, this in a man, this in a man, this in a man. I 
And I said, well, damn, me, introduce me to that man. Shit, I might. Well, that's a joke. Well, <laughs> that's but a joke. we're talking. We're talking. a puzzle piece. Anyway, we're talking about, again, sexuality as opposed to uh, maybe life partner expectations. Uh, just, I mean, it's but, but, not okay. always about who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. So that's the other thing about right. this episode. Beverly is, you know, trying to decide whether she's in love or not, or whether she's in lust or not, or whether she's in any, you know, what it is that she's in. And the, I wanted to talk a, a, a little more about um, I'm sorry. I know Big Sexy and what's the other name? Craig. Craig. We didn't discuss a lot I'm sorry, more Craig, of what you he was talking about, about. I'm sorry, Craig. You can speak for yourself. <laughs> um, about the deception. I, I believe that the Trill had a reason for hiding, you know, mm -hmm. not revealing that because a lot of people are going to look at that and go, what the, you know. Well, no, no. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Devet, Devet, I, wait, hold wait, on. wait. Wait, wait, wait. But I understand, though, you know, why they did it. And but I don't understand why Starfleet didn't know about it. Because if you have an alien on your ship that may end up, you don't know what kind of medical issue might come up. If nothing else, the, the chief of medicine or whatever her rank is should know about it. And then she, that would she be. She should have Yes, and then it would just be a part of his medical records, and, and and everything would be confidential. It wouldn't need to be released to anybody. But that's a Star Trek thing. That is like it goes way back to first original series. He didn't know Jack about any alien race. You know, I don't understand why, but he never knew. He didn't know much about Vulcans, right? He didn't know Spock was a half breed, so to speak. Uh, he didn't. I mean, it was just. It's, it's a Star Trek thing, so I can kind of forgive that, just like Craig said. But it then you got to discuss why, once the relationship started moving in a direction that was more serious, he didn't have that conversation like, okay, you may not know this, but, you know, I'm a joined being. And I, I need to, you to know that I may not always be in this body and how do you feel about that? But now, let me just address that by saying, I'm not suggesting what you're saying is not spot on correct. But I think the writers tried to get around all that by having Riker say, uh, he says he, he he delivers a monologue, something like, it's just second nature to me. I, I Would you, do you go around telling right. people you're an ind you're a, a, a solo individual? So I don't go around telling people I'm a, I'm a symbiont. Joint. Yeah, but, uh, that's it seems true. like to me when they when the the um what do they call uh the transporters beam someone up they would notice an, another life form inside remember the episode galaxy's child it was the one where yeah. that it looks like a uh wonton dumpling is floating through space <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. and they uh yes. they kill they kill it you know they defend themselves and they kill it and then it, they can read there's a ba there's a baby inside there it seemed like you would be able to tell that there's a being inside of this other creature but i will yeah. say i will say that um g given that that they're going through space and all that i mean n i don't think there's anything that a uh, a starfleet officer would run into that would be a shock or surprising so right but right. I, I i think craig made a very <laughs> excellent point that um oh I, I never have thought of it that way i don't think that odon really lies to beverly and you know what was funny to me you know, I put up on Facebook the two. I put up two posts. I said, uh, "The face you make when your trill lover is inserted into a same-sex host," <laughs> and, showed, and then I put it in uh, the face you make in 1995, and I showed or 90, yeah, yeah. 95 in the DS9, uh, still with uh, Jadzia and the, uh, the other woman. But um, mm. the, the 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 host, oh, well, I guess it's the trill, was really deceptive, and it was just so funny to me. When Beverly puts uh, is is uh, running her hand and while he's on the sick bay, running her, running her thing or uh, what's it called, the medical tricorder. Yeah. And uh -huh. then she sees that bulge, and mm -hmm. not the bulge that she was interested in. I'm sorry, I could I I couldn't help myself. <laughs> but the other bulge, and she's like, "What is that?" Oh, Don. Oh, Don. 
I need to do exploratory surgery. You may have a parasitic infection. You must not. You won't survive. And I'm just thinking, if I were a woman, I'd be thinking, oh, my God, I've been letting that curl my toes. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> but here's my here's my take. Here's my take. And I want to I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> uh, they, I hope they don't hear this show because they're going to kill me if they do. <laughs> uh, I, one of them is. But I, I don't think I can handle it only because I have had I had an experience with twins. Oh, and... hell yeah. Another puzzle piece? Oh, uh, and... Uh, no, no, no. Hey, and... now. <laughs> Listen, uh, don't get me started. Uh-uh. Uh, don't get me started. This, I'm going to keep this uh, PG rated. Family. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just remember when... But you one... already said you were with twins, so we went... Anyway. I didn't say ahead. I was with twins. I said it involves oh. twins. And I was in college. I just remember this... Uh, one of the twins... Walk. Uh, I was in my dorm, <clears throat> in my dorm in the cafeteria, and she walked through the door. And I swear to this day, outside of my wife, I have never been thunderstruck or hit by a bolt of lightning when a woman entered the room. I was done. Okay. Now, throughout the year, now I knew her her sister prior to knowing her. Okay. But she rejected me, and. There was, she's going to kill me. There was an opportunity with the sister, but it wasn't the same for me. And out of respect for, even though I was rejected, I just couldn't do that because it, it would seem creepy or seem scummy, you know? Like you were with her sister using her. Right. To a certain degree. They were both. They were both and still are highly attractive women, right? But I just, I, I, I couldn't do it. I'm not going to say anything more because I'm probably going to get my throat ripped out for, <laughs> if they <laughs> listen to this podcast. But it just got me thinking, what is the nature of attraction? How, how much for human beings is it about looks? I'm not talking mm -hmm. about gender, gender preference. I'm talking about looks mm -hmm. versus the person within, you know? The looks is what gets your attention initially. Right, yeah. that's true. But so now, now this is this is an inverse. Can the personality bring you in first, prior? It depends. It depends. Uh, I mean, now this you're talking to somebody who uh, I spent a lot of time in Second Life, which is um, I don't know if, how many of you know about that. As a I spent a thing. lot of time in Second Life. Yes. Okay, okay. So <laughs> in Second Life, yeah. it, okay, help it's, me uh, out. What okay, Second mean? Life is a virtual game. It's a virtual community on a gaming platform. So oh, okay. you cool. you kind of look. You don't. There are no rules or anything like that. But you go in. You get an avatar. You can do whatever you want. And people have basically lived a lot of their lives in the last maybe. It sounds I think like it's been the, around for about ten years. It sounds like The Sims. Is, is it The Sims? It's it's like The Sims, but it's different because with The Sims, there's still rules. There's still um, there's still you're still, from what I understand you're still kind of constrained. In Second Life, there are no limits, literally. You go in, you can, I mean, people have made their businesses. I did, I made lots of animated films on my God, Running Lady Studios is animated films that I did in Second Life. And um, so the reason why I bring it up is there have been lots of people who have formed relationships in Second Life based on, really personality because people say you know you can go in you can pretend to be whatever uh like there are tons and tons of people in there who are actually women pretending to be men and vice versa probably okay. but the, okay. eventually what happens is and people who've been in second life for probably more than six months will tell you the truth 
whoever you are comes out in your avatar, in your behavior, in your language, in how you are. Whatever it is you actually are as a person will eventually raise its head in Second Life in your avatar. So I have, I know of several people who have relationships that began in Second Life and that they became real life relationships. I know of two marriages. I know of, um, you know, people who started out in relationships who ended up breaking up and they, because who they were actually came out in their avatar. If you're an, in other words, what they used to say, if you're an asshole in real life, you're an asshole in second life eventually. So there are people who have fallen in love, never setting eyes on the person until much later in their relationship and who, you know, maybe eventually got, went on to have a relationship after seeing that person in real life, whether that person looks anything like their avatar or not, you know, well, nobody does in second life. Everybody looks like a supermodel, but, um, <clears throat> and eventually you will come to either, either like a person or not based on their relationship. Now, but you're right though. Physically, you're going to be attracted to a person or not. Uh, but if you have the option of getting to know someone before you actually see them, you can fall in love with them. It used to be done before the age of telephones, right? People used to correspond uh, with uh, letters and fall in love, never having set eyes on each other, uh, you know, and then eventually get together and, you know, marry and go on. It was more common in the past than it is now, but it's certainly possible. So you're saying that it it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is that it, in theory, is possible. Well, not theory. You, you've pointed out that yes. it actually happened. It's, it's possible to where attractiveness or looks don't play any part in developing some sort of connection. Right. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely believe that. I just think it's it may be a rarity uh, just because we so easily see each other now i mean you know we're living in the age where people swipe left or right based on a picture um you well, know so it, yes. I, I just want to jump in you know this may be just pedantic but if you think about you know I've, i see a lot of these uh, you know programs where you see people not necessarily falling in love romantically but but becoming in love with, let's say, someone who received an organ from their loved one, you know, uh, or someone who receives a transplant and they want to go find the, the 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 family member from the person who passed and they got their their kidney or whatnot and they develop a bond, not a romantic one, but nonetheless a bond that lasts life a lifetime, right? So <clears throat> I guess that is that is possible, but I, I don't discount or I don't hold anyone accountable who possibly could not continue a relationship. I think, Craig, you said this. I wouldn't hold you responsible or I wouldn't judge you for not being able to do it because, you know, uh, that, that, that there's a lot of, I mean, human dynamics, you know, being what they are. It's it's I can see it being difficult for Beverly to to accept Will Riker as a lover although they didn't do anything they just kissed. <laughs> although they did <laughs> although they did and but... also kudos to that <clears throat> person now that and that's a very good ethical question if if and i'm saying if dr crusher had smashed will Riker, <laughs> would it have been raped that's a very excellent yeah question to throw into the mix. That, like um no, not, what, what is their relationship right. what's that well <clears throat> Well, Will went into this willingly. True, but he didn't go in with full disclosure on Beverly's part. Just like, he, you know, well, Will... No, they all knew that they were having a... They, they she knew, he knew she was hitting that, so yeah. yeah. She, and he knew that. Was there, was there really, though, I mean, was that discussed? Was anybody... The this... only person that I know for sure who knew about it was Dr. Uh, I mean, uh, was... Um, Troy. Troy and, and she can't keep her mouth happened. shut. You know, you she, she ran to Riker and said, "Guess what? Uh, let me tell you something." Well, it's possible, but do we know? I mean, was that a 
Do we know they slept the together? Do we know? Wait, do that. we? Y'all seem to know that Crusher and Rocker slept together. I don't know. Yeah, that. but I don't remember anything. <laughs> Put it this in way: the... the minute they got, he got the the symbiote in him. Uh-huh. He knew. Uh-huh. Okay, he yeah. knew. But with the and symbiote... this is real Rocker we're talking about, Mister. <laughs> Let's go to Riza. Guys are yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, was yeah, down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I think Big Sexy but... just put the he put the cherry on top of that cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, well... What's the question, though? I mean, what's the, here's a the question. In later episodes, once we learned more about the Trill in uh, DS9, there did seem to be a true symbiotic relationship. So they became one being, and they shared, uh, you know, I guess, feelings, emotions, or whatever. But in Will's case, he, he wasn't trained to be a Trill, and his body actually rejected the Trills. So... How much was he just like a passenger on somebody else's ride, basically? How much was his consciousness involved in this? They weren't speaking like we. We were like, um, uh, you remember in uh, the original series when Spock was joined with the thing in the box, the ugly, ugly thing? What was it? Yeah, Is there in truth laughing. no beauty? Yeah. Right. In that, he his consciousness was a part of of that relationship he even mm-hmm. said at one point when he said uh, when the doctor says that's not spock and then then spock answers him he's like no that's spock so his personality was joined truly but in this case was will a part of anything that was going on or was he just his consciousness basically asleep i think it was his consciousness his consciousness was physically asleep because the trill is going to attach to the host the same way, and the host either adapts or doesn't. Because okay, I, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. I, I feel See, like the that's trill. That's what I think. I think the trill. They through some through evolution, they found a host race that was perfectly suited for them. Now that putting aside that the race changes from TNG to DS9 because yeah, in DS9 they have the speckles, freckles, whatever. That wasn't the case here. But <clears throat> I think the trill is going to work the same way. It's going to try to connect to his host the same way it would with its indigenous host. So I, I don't think Will was there. Hence the body, rege- part of the body mm-hmm. rejecting the host or the the trill. But I want to I want to move on. This was that was very interesting. Even though you guys took it to a little bit of like uh, Jerry Springer levels, <laughs> needlessly. I want to read. Some Are we going to move on? Are we going to move on to the actual people that just willingly say oh hey i've showed up for you know have an implantation yes you know like so willingly oh hi you know please put something inside you know i don't want to be here anymore (laughs) whatever yeah that doesn't make any that that never that doesn't make any sense does it 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 indicates that that race must be missing something that they find that the trill give them what do they gain from well it? they talk about that in ds9 right like uh not Je- uh what was the last- esri uh she's i think they talk about the fact that the they want this it's not every member of that race who does it but the ones who do want to gain the the history of that host as a part of their uh memories and experience or whatever that they become a much more full fully realized being in their opinion because they don't lose their conscience that's what i was saying the difference between she oh, well, and maybe, Riker. maybe i was wrong they, okay i, see, for, I forgot thinking. about that i forgot about that all right I, if i recall am i does anybody i don't remember, remember that i was like <clears throat> i remember there was a conversation i thought about it because somebody asked that same question because esri was very young uh-huh. What was it? She? Yeah, I remember you're right. So in the in the DS9 version of the troll, the mm-hmm. when the host accepts the troll, they are more together in the journey compared to how it's portrayed in the host, where supposedly the troll takes over completely and Will Riker is not there anymore. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's, a, it's a change, or maybe we could think of it as it was already that way, but they didn't portray it in this episode. Which then leave, leaves us to wonder if Will Riker was aware of, uh, you know, Beverly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I like how because... you said it discreetly, Greg. That's thank you. Mm-hmm. Keeping it PG. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, that's the thing. I was thinking I wouldn't call it. Well, I don't know what you would call it, rape or whatever. But I think it was definitely something. There should have been a conversation about it afterwards, if nothing else. I mean, I imagine my in my uh, mind an extension of this episode would have been Beverly sitting down with with Riker and saying, "I think you should know." Whatever, and then we might have had a clue if Will had said something like, "Well, <laughs> I was aware, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to intrude." You know, of course something. He wouldn't want to you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, maybe he was aware on a certain level, but it would have been interesting to know. But I think at that point they weren't interested in developing this race for future reference. Right. Well, now, you I, know, I want to now. I want to move forward because. And I, I want to ask you to bear with me, both my panel and my audience. I picked up, no, I picked up a, I did a, I did a thorough, a thorough research, thorough researching of this episode. And by that, I mean, I typed in Wikipedia. And that was supposed to be a joke, but okay. Uh, I got information about this episode and I want to, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of lengthy, but I want to read all this through. And you will note something that you will probably mock me about. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so we're moving to the ending now. And just, just as an overall, so everyone remembers, at the end, Beverly is anxiously awaiting uh, the new host. And when Worf walks into the sick bay, she turns with a huge smile on her face when Worf announces the new host is here. Now, that would indicate <laughs> that would indicate to me that... She had a hard time dealing with Riker only because she knew him as a friend. She didn't seem to care when the new host came. She was excited. However, the twist is that a woman walks into the sick bay. Now, I'm going to read this here. It's a little lengthy, but you just bear with me. So, the ending of the episode has received a mixed reception with Zach Handlin from the AV Club saying that the reaction by Crusher made perfect sense while others suggested that the statement regarding Crusher's views on homosexuality should have been confined as a character trait rather than a general statement on the opinions of the species. James Van Hise, in his book, The Unauthorized Trek, The Complete Next Generation, (laughs) called the introduction of the trill an element crucial to Deep Space Nine, but was critical of the decision to have Crusher not be interested in Odan once he had transferred to his new female host. This apparent homophobia was said to have resulted in the episode being widely criticized by David Grevin in his book, Gender and Sexuality in Star Trek. Uh, I got to, these books sound fascinating. Keith Mm -hmm. DeCandida, in his article for Tor.com, said it was difficult to give a fair review of the episode due to the trill being explored in greater depth in Deep Space Nine and the subsequent alterations made for that series compared to the host. (laughs) Okay, we kind of get into that. Now, here we go. He said more generally of the episode that the romance felt rushed. I could see that. Mm -hmm. And he would have liked to see the exploration of Riker's feelings about his body being used to have sex with a friend. There you go. A further, well, that's one man's opinion. A a further Mm -hmm. criticism was leveled at the ending as Crusher stated that it was humans who have a problem with homosexuality rather than limiting limiting it to be her own problem. I don't know if I agree with that's what she was implying. He gave it a rating of 4 out of 10. Now, here's the last paragraph. Nick Kepler, writing for Nerve.com, listed the host as one of the gayest episodes of the franchise. Don't know if I agree with that. And described the twist at the end of the episode with the gender of Odon's new host as sapphic. He criticized the reaction of Crusher at the end of the episode, saying that she would get into bed with shifty aliens with weird ridged foreheads. I don't remember that happening either. But for some reason draws the line at space ladies. Zach Handlin gave the episode a rating of B plus in his review for the AV Club, saying that the idea at the core of the episode was better than the execution. But he said that the ending made perfect sense as he said that love wasn't solely spiritual, but that we fall in love with features, with shapes, with bodies, as well as with minds. He added that Odan's reaction was also right, as everyone has a line, and if you love them, you won't ask them to cross it. Now, I I thought that was a great read. I want to go first here. I just, I remember uh, Beverly says, perhaps it's a human failing Mm -hmm. 
uh, that we can't change as much as you do. Something like that, she says. My poor Beverly. This has been so hard for you. I want to thank you for your caring, for your standing by me. I congratulate you. You averted a war that would have cost many lives. Yes. It seems as though everything has turned out for the best. And yes, I am still Odan, and I still love you. I cannot imagine that ever changing. I'm glad that you're all right. Is there to be nothing more? Perhaps it is a human failing, but we are not accustomed to these kinds of changes. I can't keep up. How long will you have this host? What would the next one be? I can't live with that kind of uncertainty. Perhaps someday our ability to love won't be so limited. I understand. At no point, as I guess Mr. Handlin is, suggests, did I take that line to mean that humans, one of our failings is we can't accept homosexuality. It might be, but I don't think she was speaking for humanity. She was speaking for the fact that she can't, she, and she even says, I can't keep up with these changes. What if the next host, for all she knows, the next host could be a, a bear or, I don't know, a, a creature, you know, a non-humanoid creature. You know, for all she knows. We know that's not the case, but they don't know. Uh, furthermore, I just think, now we're in a, we're in a far, progress, far more progressive society now, okay, which is, I don't, to a certain extent, I don't have a problem with that. Sometimes I think we go a little bit too far, but th I think the message or the overall spirit mentality is perfectly correct. However, I just think it does a disservice to the character and to people who would suggest that Beverly is being homophobic simply because she's not willing to explore a lesbian relationship. That is not for everyone. That doesn't mean you don't accept it that other people have that preference it's just not for you and i just don't like this implication that we all i mean i can tell you right now if my wife's uh essence spirit whatever were transferred into a man's body i could be friends with that with with her as a in a man's body but i can't be married to her anymore i can't have relations with her anymore that's not that's not who i am so I, I just think it's a little, I think it's a little offensive to say that Beverly is experiencing homophobia. I just think that's way off the mark. Uh, but who, don't who, you think it's a, it's, the episode was written in 1991. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then we were barely out of the 80s, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we were very homophobic as a race. Mm -hmm. yeah. the humans were very homophobic still in the, in those days. It's so much, so different now, but 1991? Mm -hmm. Well, so no, but, but, think, but Craig, yeah. remember, it was only four. It was only three years later that we saw a kiss on uh, on DS Nine. No, I know, but I'm just saying. It's just I just think if you just think back to when the episode was written and filmed, it was 1991, barely out of the 80s. I think people were, and that's why I think they actually ended it that way. Mm -hmm. I think they were too scared to show a <clears throat> Dr. Crusher saying, "Oh, okay, let's do this." Yeah, I think they probably felt like, you know, I don't think they, it wasn't meant to be a discussion on that, but maybe they thought they were being a little forward thinking by having that question come up at the end. And maybe, you know, they had it at the end because they didn't want to have that discussion yet. But um, I thought it was 
interesting. I, you know, of course, I think there were a lot of us who wanted her to say, yeah, okay, you're beautiful just, and you're a beautiful soul and let's keep going with this. But then where do they go in, in the series? It would have been wonderful to see that, uh, but I don't think they were ready yet. I don't think they thought that their fan base were, was ready or that the, I don't know, even the TV censors were were uh, ready for it yet. But the interesting thing about it, again, is her reaction to the kiss. I think her reaction to the kiss on the wrist was a, a beautiful, um, what's the word? Not a, not a compromise, but a hopeful note, so to speak, because her, everything about her went to pleasure with the kiss, not lust, just surprised pleasure that yes in fact this was her odon and that fact could not be denied something about that moment which was so much odon and so much the odon that she fell in love with that it for a moment she might have questioned her own decision you know or that you know maybe it made her become uh, a little more thoughtful about love and and uh, you know the difference between physical and emotional or spiritual love down the line. But I liked that moment because it was almost like a well, we can't go here yet, guys. But we'll give you this. We'll give you this moment of Beverly thinking. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I don't necessarily mean what I just said. Well, let me ask you. Let me let me move to big sexy here. Uh, let me just frame frame this, and I want to hear your thoughts. <clears throat> Although I don't blame Beverly Crusher for not pursuing the relationship, I don't blame her for that at all. And I don't like Mister Hanlon's uh, suggestion or supposition that she's homophobic because she doesn't want to sleep with a woman. All right, but um, I was a little. I have to say, I was still a little disappointed that they didn't at least let her explore it or at least some moment where she leans in and she's like, I just, I can't do this. I'm just not ready. Something, you know, something mm -hmm. where she should have just put up a wall right away. Now, I would have liked that just to show that we, we as a society writing these shows are progressing. But we're, what we, like Craig said, we're not, we weren't at that point, right? So given that, it still worked for me that she just wasn't willing to. The the other, but the the more problem I had with, and I'm going to read this again. Uh, this is Mr. Handlin again saying that um, Odin's reaction was also right, as everyone has a line, and if you love them, you won't ask them to cross it. I I, I don't know if I agree with that either. I think Odin was a little bit, and this was the timidity of the writers, I think, of the time. Why was Odon, just because the Trill was now in a woman's body, so willing to back off immediately? Riker was, like, pressing and pressing. But Odon, like, okay, I understand. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to fall back. That didn't strike me as real for the character or for anyone no. that would be in love. They would at least press on a little before backing up. Don't, don't you think, Big Sexy? No, because no? I'm looking at the scene now. Or she kissed her on the wrist, and Beverly looked a little like, "Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly." You know, it got yeah. her attention. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but with Odon, we don't know how many times this has happened for her. Ah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. So good we point. don't know. Good point. You're saying that Odon has done has, this has happened to Odon before. Had to. Probably. Now, with the nature of being a joined being. And I'm going to use a lot of today's nomenclature. Odon is fluid by nature. Uh -huh. So when he's a guy, he's a guy. Now that he's a, she's a woman now, she tried it with Beverly. Beverly was like, no, nah, I don't think so. Cool. But the only thing. I'm doing my own thing. But let me, let me just hop in here real quick. The only thing about that is you make a good point. However, I think it falls down because. If Odon is familiar with this scenario, even when Odon was in Riker, Odon wouldn't have been pressing Beverly as hard either. I think the probably there may have been a little more what's the word desperation 
in uh, his deal when he was within Riker because That's I right. think he, he's a man. He did right. not he's a man. Know. Man, man, well, man get well, no, 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 <laughs> no. No, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I just think he thought that he was. He did not know what was going to be happening uh-huh. soon. He did not know whether his host would get there in time. He didn't know. He just, I think he just wanted to be with Beverly one more time because he didn't know exactly what was going to happen. He probably felt the body was getting ready to reject. He did, you know, all of that. Whereas once he, remember when he, uh, when, he, when uh, he goes into the new host body and she asks him how he feels and he says, I've never felt better never felt except better. maybe once or twice. And that once or twice being when he was in another correct trill host right so i think uh at that point it was just much more relaxed happy good feeling and you know maybe thinking she could go along with this too but then when she did and it was like oh, okay i i know this i understand yeah I, and, I've, I've heard this song before yeah 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 i don't know i i, I think i don't know i i think a person in that situation in 2020 or 2019, they would continue to pursue for a little bit. But I, I you just said you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. No, me. No, if I if I were gender, <laughs> no, if if I were gender fluid, I would. I think I would try to court the person a little bit more as opposed to just backing off. And eventually, I would say, okay, I'm not. This isn't. This clearly, you have made up your mind. I'm going to back off now. But I wouldn't on the first meeting say, okay, I get it. Well, there was a big difference in Beverly's demeanor when she uh, met the host, uh, the new host, and then when she was with Will. There was a lot more initial hostility. Uh, or not hostility, but definitely coldness. She was very cold to the new Odon well, yeah. than she was when she was with Will. Well, you know. Well, maybe, maybe it's this, because I remember clearly when I watched it this time, Odon doesn't seem heart doesn't seem torn up, doesn't seem rejected or anything. He, he, she, she it just seems like okay. She can a, say they. Just go ahead and give her in. They. Say they. I, I, I can't. It I, could be they. No, well, no. In this case, it could be no. In this case, it could be they. It could be they because there are two. Or she. I, I think say... the trail is. I think they would take on the sexual, uh, the gender of whatever body that they were in. He, she, well, well, wait a minute. No, wait, wait, wait. They. Cisco, yeah. Cisco calls Jadzi an old man, even though the host is in a female body. But that's a nickname. That's just a nickname between the two of them. I don't think it has anything to do with gender, except that that was the gender that he knew him as. But I exactly. think it was, I think exactly. it was just their their nickname for each other, or he, his he, nickname. Cisco never referred to Cisco referred to Jadzi as she. Right. Okay. I would say that, uh, Mike, to back up, I, I, I agree with you that we should have seen Odan more distressed by this. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he put yeah. on a brave front, we should have had a scene where he was walking away with tears welling up in his eyes. Oh, or something that like would that, have right? been great. Because it would have yeah. shown that he's really feeling crushed by this whole right. thing. But he put on a brave front. But Beverly was all like, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I want, you know, I needed to see a scene. The last scene should have been Bever- uh, uh, um, Odan maybe tearing up, getting ready to be transported, and Beverly rushes into the transporter room just to say goodbye. And kisses. Maybe a kiss on a maybe a kiss on the cheek. No, no. I think they would have had a full on lip lock. Nah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yep. Nope. Yep. Would have been necessary. Yep. Why? And then watch and watch the whole transporter crew go. Ooh. Okay, you no. got you, you, okay. You got jokes. Okay. No, no, no. But I'm serious, though. I'm serious. I think if you're gonna have that moment, whether you rush in, then they need to just go for it. In nah. this case, they chose not to do that, and they chose to have this very, you know, uh, touching farewell. So I, I could go with the uh, with Onan leaving with tears in it, her eyes at that point. Or with Beverly rushing into the transporter room, no. and you know, for a big on big old kiss. No, Beverly but, wouldn't. Uh, Beverly wouldn't do that because it would be too. It would make it would lead Odon on much? even more. It would make. Uh, well, if you can kiss me on the lips now, why am I leaving? She would just. She would kiss her on the cheek. Well, then maybe it would be not a leaving. Maybe it was like you know what. Let's see where this goes. 
And then they wouldn't, they'd never have to refer to it again. They have, that happens all the time with Star Trek characters where they have these relationships and then you think, well, you know, maybe we'll keep in touch or maybe we'll, you know, but you don't, you never see that person again. <laughs> you know, it just seems like the relationship I don't know if that's true. is I think, a long distance relationship. I don't know if that's true. I think all the relationships are pretty much resolved no, over not an episode no, or an no. arc. No. Wesley, I remember, oh, I'm sorry. If she had kissed I shouldn't bring up Wesley, but. I hate him. I love. If she had kissed her in the turbo like at the transporter, (laughs) it could have been like, "Let me kiss her on the lips." You kiss her on the lips. You're like, "Okay, now I know for certain this ain't for me." Oh, that could have worked too. There's a lot of ways. You mean like, uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You mean like striking vipers, kissing in the rain? What? I I knew you were gonna bring that up. (laughs) I knew it. You're so predictable. You never saw. um, There's an episode. There was a controversial episode of Striking Vipers. I'm sorry, I'm of uh, Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Uh, oh, see, I haven't seen all of those, so never mind. Uh, you gotta Don't see, tell well, me. Okay. Don't tell me. I, okay. Well, okay, I won't. <laughs> but <laughs> we, uh, someone earlier in this in this conversation, someone was talking. Oh, when you were talking about the not the Sims, real what's it called? Single Life. Second Life. Second, second Life. life yeah, mm-hmm. that that was that, basically that's what that episode of Black Mirror is. Oh, it, it goes okay. it goes very much more intense. Anyway, uh, moving forward, um, Craig, did you say everything you wanted to say? What, what did you? Th- I think did you finish your uh, your take on this? Yeah, I did. I think so. I think I've I've said all I'm going to say about this episode, and <laughs> I did enjoy it, but um, mm-hmm. disappointed at the end. But yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I want to address something else, and we 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 are over time right now, uh, but I want to take another. I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Well, I'm directing this to Big Sexy. It might have to be 15 minutes. Um, uh, I'm holding up a finger again. <laughs> you be... know if this episode happened, I was going to say, you know if this episode had happened, was re- was um, shot now, if somehow we'd had this episode now, this would be a new character on the, on the show. Well, and the relationship between she and Beverly would be explored. We'd have a new character. But anyway, uh, I'm, going I'm on. Sure, I'm pretty sure you're right about that. So prior to convening to discuss this episode, I got on our uh, on our chat, I got Big Sexy texting me talking about how horrible an actress Gates McFadden is. Yeah, oh, my God. My husband said the same thing. There it is. And I'm like. My husband said the same thing. Well, at least about this episode. But go ahead. Are you nuts? She did an amazing job on this episode. No, she did not. Yes, she did. The scene where Will Riker comes into the um, into Ten Ford and Beverly is sitting there talking to was it Guinan or or Troy? It was Guinan. She does some amazing work just with her face, no dialogue. When she turns <laughs> to look at Riker, what are you talking about? This was one of her standout episodes. There is this one particular scene. Let me pull this up and straighten you out right now. Oh, my man. It's, he, 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 has a, he has a drawer of receipts. <laughs> I believe, personally, that Where Gates McFadden, had she not been on Star Trek, would have gone on to have a fairly impressive television and film career. Did she not I have think, one? Are you suggesting she didn't I, have one? Well, I... I know she did a lot of guests, guest appearing, you know, and and smaller parts, but I believe that she probably would have gone on to do more, uh, maybe larger parts in different films. I just think Star Trek has a tendency to do that. In very few exceptions, it can it can kill an acting career. Uh, for the, I hate to say that because a lot of people say, oh no, it's not true, but it is. I mean, because if you look at um, um, Brent Spiner, who is like an amazing actor, he is. He did some fantastic work on Star Trek, but it did hobble him as an act as an actor. He did do some things, some memorable stuff after. Uh, I imagine I don't know what his career was beforehand, but uh, I do believe that. I mean, God, if you just even looked at Picard uh, as a series, that last. Uh, episode I mean, he was just you know they didn't give him enough to do but what little they did uh he was amazing 
Well, I, it's just really amazing. I, Watching the two of them together is amazing. I um he did appear. I don't want to. I don't want to get the. I don't want to get off into Brent Spiner, but mm-hmm. he appeared in. See, Brent Spiner to me, he either is way too hammy, or he is brilliant. And when I say hammy, any of his Noonan Soon appearances, I I couldn't stand them. He appeared in. This was maybe I don't know ten years ago now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he appeared in the Halle Berry produced, and she starred in it. The uh, introducing Dorothy Dandridge. Mm-hmm. And he was amazing in that, mm-hmm. amazing. And I was like, "This is data I'm watching right here. I need to see this guy do some more stuff." And unfortunately, I can't think. It seemed like there was one other. He did a couple of sitcoms. I remember he guest starred in, but other than that, I can't think of anything. All right, so big sexy. Where where are we? What, what what's going on? <clears throat> we are at thirty three minutes sixteen seconds. They are in sick bay. He's talking to her. She's all, please don't. The pain's gone. Thank you. Please don't. Please let me touch you. Just for a moment. No, please. Oh, God. (laughs) Terrible. And she and she's carrying it like she's talking to a rapist. It's like no, no. She she had no projection. Okay, hang on a she, second. She, hang, oh, whoa, go, whoa, ahead, whoa. go ahead, pull up, pull up. No, I, I know that I know the scene you're talking about. And to me, listen. First of all, I'm not going to judge how a woman's going to react to that situation. So to right. say she she's reacting like she's talking to a rapist. I mean, she's look, just look at her. She's scared. She's terrified. I'm she's looking sc- at her. She's scared. And- Come on, Terrifying. it is a weird thing. I mean, this is new for her. And she's also emotionally, it would be one thing if it were a patient, just a patient, but it's also somebody that she was in, involved and in. She could, and this could be a direction issue because she could say, you know what? Hey, mm-hmm. man, slow down. This is all coming on too fast. But no, but she, but she, figure it out. That's the brilliance. She still is somewhat a Brilliant? She's, no. Listen, listen, just listen to me. She's still somewhat lured. Lord, is that lured? Lured to it. Get it out. Get it out. She's still lured to it, but she's afraid that she's being lured to it. That she's brilliant in this episode. This episode, remember me. Brilliant. Uh, Sub Rosa. Wait, brilliant. let's remember me. Which remember one? me, where everyone starts disappearing, and she's the last one on the ship. Oh, okay. That's Pretty low threshold of brilliant, man. I, I disagree. Watch, remember me again. <laughs> Watch, remember me. Now, now she- as far as acting chops, uh, my man Colm Meany has been in a lot of films okay. before good. and after Star Trek. I watched Jeffrey Combs, Mark Alamo, and um, uh, Casey Biggs. When they were here several years ago, they did some Shakespeare, and I'm like, I'm I'm in the back snickering. I'm like Shakespeare, you wussies. But they enthralled the whole room. Yeah, These I, cats I, are I think really that's a, good. I got. I think that says a lot about you, talk calling them wussy. I would love, you know, I would love to see Patrick Stewart. I would love to see Kelsey Grammer. I would love to see either mm. of those actors do Shakespeare. So you're, I, well, you expect if you them want them. to, you, you can listen. Those guys. You can, yeah, because that's. I mean, especially. Patrick Stewart, you know, yeah. you know, uh, but uh, you can watch him. You can listen to him read Shakespeare sonnets every day. Who, Patrick Stewart? A different sonnet. Yeah, he's doing it online to he's like, during the yeah. quarantine. He's should, reading right. every Shakespeare sonnet one a day. Let, let me let me just I should I should and and my fellow red shirts will will vouch for me that I I've been consistently saying this. I should have qualified that by saying the Patrick Stewart back then. The Patrick oh, Stewart, the Patrick Stewart now, I don't know. What's but wrong with Patrick I don't, Stewart? I don't. Want, nothing's wrong. with I don't with even. Him. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't want to go there. Don't don't talk to me about Patrick Stewart unless you're talking in terms of praise. He is <laughs> like a brilliant actor. He is. And uh, he is. Yeah, he, he is. So. But you can and listen a to you can genuine listen, human being. You can listen to our uh, our last two podcasts and you you'll see. 
I have nothing negative to say about him. Are you talking about the series? No. Well, oh, that's okay. All right. Well, wait, no, let me wait, hold on. No, no, no. It's fine. If you have criticisms of Picard, I have lots of criticisms I, of Picard. Well, I do have but... criticisms of Picard, and one of the criticisms is Patrick Stewart's performance. But oh God, that's, talk. that's for another. That's for some, that's another time. I I love the guy. I love the guy. The episode, uh, the nth degree. The nth degree. You remember that episode? Yeah. Oh yeah. Beverly Crusher, Gates McFadden, and Barclay are doing a scene from Cyrano de Bergerac. Mm -hmm. And she now she's acting as Beverly Crusher, acting as Roxanne. Mm -hmm. She kills it. She kills it. I don't don't take that somewhere else that she's not a good actress. I think again, like I said, I don't think that well. I know she had issues with the show's portrayal of the character and that kind of thing as a, an actress. I just think she would have done more, and I think she realizes that if she hadn't been on that show for so long. And I think there are <laughs> actors who break out of those types of things, and typically they're British. And uh -huh. I think it's mainly because it's a different uh, training, a different uh, approach to acting. You know, they are pretty much take anything because they're... Um, for them, it's work, you know, it's a trade. Uh, and so that's why a lot of actor, British actors uh, can rise above bad work or, you know, bad movies or bad shows or bad theater they've been in. But uh, American actors have don't get that same uh, flexibility. or I mean, they aren't given that same um, uh, wiggle room. I don't know why. But Brent Spiner and Gates McFadden are two good examples, I think, of actors on that show who, who weren't able to escape Star Trek successfully, huh. which is why so many actors avoid, like, used to be Westerns, now it's sci-fi. You know, it's just because they feel like that they're going to fall into that Star Trek trap. Craig, what do you think about Gates McFadden as a performer? I I would say that I'm a little of the road on that. I don't think she's brilliant. I don't think she was a terrible actress, especially on this episode. I wasn't blown away by her. All right. Well, Craig, I, I, you know, I turned the con over to you. And you just let me down. You're supposed to support your captain, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in your next performance review. <laughs> but anyway, I think we have reached Starbase 34. We're going to uh, drop off our our commander for the day being Ms. DeVetsy. Uh Any last words? Any last words? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I would just say it's, it's, it is an interesting episode to discuss. It's it been, is. I'd love, I, you know, I could go, we could go on, but I think it's, um, it was a nice jumping off point for discussion. And I think they, they did that. I think there was, there have been a lot of articles and uh, a lot of discussion about this episode and how it approached love and sexuality. So, okay, kudos right. for them on that point. At any rate, they did. They did at least ex explore it. They opened the door to it. it. It was Ellen that said, "I'm gay," that really brought, brought it to the forefront. But prior to that, we got Star Trek that said, "Okay, we can touch upon it, but only go so far." So. I applaud them for at least doing that. I just wish they had gone a little bit further. And yeah. I would say in regards to the trill, um, it's clear that, I think you said this, Devet, that they introduced this alien race but really did not see it being a mainstay because you can tell that we see attributes of the trill in DS9 that we don't see. Well, I should say it in reverse. Mm -hmm. We don't see attributes in DS9 that we see in, in this episode like, the bulge growing and pulsing and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, but yes, one of my favorite episodes. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun discussing it. Listen, everyone who had a chance to listen to this, thank you for listening. If you hang on for um, f uh, till next week or maybe sooner, maybe sooner, we will be discussing with our esteemed colleague, Devet C. We, I found one of the, I'm going to call it the lost episode. The lost episode mystery. Drum roll. Anyone, can, can anyone do a drum roll for me? 
<laughs> oh god. Okay. <laughs> Boy. I tried. It didn't come through. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay, no problem. Well, we discuss um another topic that my crew kind of mutinied against me on, and that was um sexual harassment on the Enterprise. Ooh. So Stay tuned for that episode. I'm going to put them back to back, all right? So while we're sitting at home, locked down, you can be entertained by the dulcet tones of our voices discussing the marvelous franchise, at least back then, that that was Star Trek. Shade intended. Okay, guys. <laughs> Unless you have anything else to say, I want to close it up here. Anything last? Any, that, that's it, right? That's Thanks it. for joining us, David. Thanks for joining oh, us. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. and I'm, pleasure. Su- I'm sure we'll have I'm sure we'll have you back. Maybe I should have you back so we can fight it out about Star Trek Picard. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to talk about Star Trek Picard. Go check out the go check out the uh there's two um episodes, the last two episodes. I did one by myself and one with the full crew. All right everyone, stay safe, be safe, wear your masks, stay inside, six feet, the whole thing. We'll see you Wash later. Wash your hands. Wash your hands, take care. Bye. Bye. Big sexy, can I get a can I get a harumph or something? (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, we got a special one today. This one is a double header. And we have a special guest host. Stay tuned. That's ah, that's so corny. (laughs) It's fine. Big sexy, can I get a can I get a harumph or something? Hello. Are you there? Oh, you know what? There. I thought I was stopping the record. I actually stopped the oh. Skype. Red shirts is not endorsed by Paramount Pictures, Viacom, or CBS. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Star Trek, the Star Trek logo, and all names, pictures, and audio of Star Trek characters are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and or copyright holders.